Uh, Brand true. Oh, Catspot nine thousand is here. Catspot nine thousand. Mon- Monty Williams is a garbage hire. Phoenix imploded each of the last two, two years. years. Detroit needed a younger coach who can develop their young players. I don't know, like, uh, say, Devin Booker on a 19-win team. Like, develop them like that, Catspot 9000. Or how, maybe so you can compute it a little better. When Monty Williams got to Phoenix, Devin Booker had won 19 games and was in his fourth year. You can tell me what you think. Sexual. I'm telling you what we know. That's what we know. So, you, you, again, all I can do is present to you the facts. It's up to you. You're, you're on your own after that. that. That's all that I can do to you. Um, speaking of the higher, LFG says, um, Hey, Spencer, I base my takes on Neil's safe cap space built through the draft approach per two furnace Neil rules cap rules. I thought Lions are still at an earlier stage of rebuilding right now. Uh, they, they are still early, Lions are. They just continue to hit on draft picks. Like, that's the difference. I would, I would argue that the Pistons, again... Through the crowd, everybody likes the setup with the two guards and Jalen Duran. Everybody likes it. Did he miss on one? Yeah, he missed on one. Killian. By the way, you know who else is a winner in all this? And you won't like this. Killian Hayes is a winner. I like Killian. In this too. Flannel doesn't. In terms of running that style of offense, then mm-hmm. you might not like it, Sam Flannel. Can you shoot forty percent from the field one season? Maybe thirty percent from three one season. That is a non-negotiable for me. Until then, get him out. Done. Bye. Don't care if Monty Williams is there or not. He is. He's past. He's past it for me. He is past that bridge of any redemption for me. As of now, he's going to be your defensive guard. He's going to. He's going to be your sub for Ivy when they got to get a stop. Okay, but that doesn't nullify. If you shoot that poorly from the floor, I'm, I don't I'm just care telling you, you how do. I think it's going to go down, Flannel. And yeah, he might be. He might be able to get a few stops that Jaden Ivy wouldn't. But if, when you shoot that poorly from the floor, it doesn't matter what else you do. It's like in baseball when your on base percentage is in the twos. It doesn't matter much what else you do. Get that up first. Hey, Flannel, can you do you speak French? I do not speak yeah, French. Yeah, I tip. I, I knew you hated Killian Hayes for some reason. <laughs> ah. Jealousy. Speaking French. I guess French. I don't like. That. <laughs> that had to be it. I knew there was something over there. Um, Blade Noisewood says the one thing. The the one thing I agree with Sam Flannel on is Killian Hayes. We're not doing. We're not doing the Killian thing today. All right, no, everybody. No, but does this not give him a fresh? more of a fresh lease on life you know I, like I, it, I think it complements his skill set does more. it complement the coach and the way that he yes. wants to do the five second offense or the five what, is, what are we half, calling half it? second offense half what half second point five second yeah but point does, five it, second does it play into Killian's game yes. and does it, does it not turn into I'm sorry that Killian you know he, and Sam's right stats are stats and he's proven that so he can go down but you mentioned something about defense about subbing in about building a team we're mentioning you asked three guys. There's the rest of this team around them that who, right, coming in there that, that have to play. And it's guys that can play under the system. Right. So maybe maybe it's a, it's a blessing because it gets sort of a new, newer lease on life. And if Monty Williams is the, the guard whisperer, isn't that the guy you need whispered to? Yeah. So, um, Nolan says, this coaching move is the same old Pistons move. Give me the why. Like, it's easy to say that in a text thread. Give me the why. I'll wait. Send it in. As soon as, as, soon as you send it in there, I'll read it. I won't, even, I won't even read it internally first. I'll go right to it. So what? just send that one in. Uh, Pistons ownership and management is the biggest issue. Based on what, Nolan? Give me the why. What, because the, the owner went out there and took the biggest coaching prize in for coaching free agency and made him the highest paid coach in the NBA. So the owner's a problem because of that? I think for maybe, real? Maybe because he did it again with Dwayne Casey, right? You know what I'm saying? Just going out where they're just looking superficial, going out and getting the best guy out there, you know, Casey off his coach. What else can you do? No, I no, I understand, yeah. right? You're going out and getting the best thing and put, putting money and investing in. It's, if it's like he said... Doing the same things that Pistons always do. Well, you, to the point, yes. You mentioned it earlier. Tom Gores went out and brought arguably a national person in Blake Griffin here. 
didn't work out, but he was willing to spend the money. Went and got, got Dwayne Casey. He was supposed to make this the young guys. It didn't work out. Now he goes and gets Monty Williams. We got to see if it works out. So I guess to his point, yeah, he's doing the same thing, spending money. Right? Spending money. It's all you can ask for, man. It, it, it's, all, it's, all you, it's all you can ever ask for, for from an ownership group. Um, but yeah, so, so the story is... And, and this would be an issue if your coaching salary had anything to do with your salary cap. But it doesn't. So this is just billionaires. And, and what are the Pistons worth? Oh, over over a billion dollars now, yeah. Right. And what did Gores get him for? Three hundred million. Three hundred. Three hundred so, some so, change. Yeah. Uh, I mean, hockey guy can do the math. There's a lot of zeros in there to be <laughs> able to mix and match and, and spend money, whether zero. if you think it's frivolously or if it's not. But to go out and get, arguably, the, the you you're at the bottom. You got to get the best coach yeah. or the guy that you think can get your guys going. Now, now for the 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 last piece of this now. Um, before we before we kind of move on the the financial angle of it, so he's guaranteed to make just about seventy and a half million dollars, no matter no matter what happens. There was a reason for this too, guys, and and here's what it is. Monty Williams was in a spot. He had he had recently signed an extension with the Suns, obviously before Ishbia took over the ownership. Monty Williams was going to make twenty one million dollars to not work over the next three years. To not work. Damn! You see what I'm saying here? Like, he has to be incentivized. And I know that we, you know, I can't relate to that. We can't relate to that. But it, but it doesn't change the fact that that's the card he had to play. You have to incentivize him. It has to be a tremendously paying deal. Because there's a bigger percentage of people out there, Spenny... Then, then would like to admit, mm -hmm. given the choice, would you want to work for 78 or just take 21 for free? Yeah. There's a larger percentage than we would like to admit that would say, ah, I'll just take the 21 for free. I'm yeah. taking the 21. Yeah. Me too. But obviously he's made differently to coach or whatever if you're not done on whatever your mission is. Boom. Like, and I keep, I keep hearing, like, do you even give a shit the fact that if anybody on, on Phoenix, Devin Booker and, and D Durant wanted this guy fired or what, what does that have to do with anything? There's been good. No I'm glad that. they did. They're a bunch of fucking losers. <laughs> There's been no reports of that either. But I'm just saying yeah. that, that even speculation or even uh, Budenholzer, if Jonas didn't want, who cares if you want him or not, does he work for you? Like, I don't get it. Cause some, Oh, Whoa, Devin, but you know, like you're not talking about somebody. You might have to give credibility if it's somebody that's got a multiple championships. You know, like LeBron to have some sort of say. Yeah. But no, that that that, that doesn't mean anything to me. Does it mean anything to you? No. Like absolutely zero. Yeah. No. You either do the job, you either set up the way you break it down, Neil. The way that the stats, the way that what we came out of anybody else, the most pointed twenty eighth overall team that you hold the ball, don't move the ball, and you got a guy coming in that's going to say move the ball. We all thought we got to get better defensively, but maybe it's the pace of play and the decision making that makes us be will get us better defensively. Right. Uh, this is the guy. 100 percent 100 percent and brandon katz says williams is still getting paid by phoenix coaching contracts are guaranteed yes brandon i'm aware of that i understand the structure of how they work you need to understand life in the real world to where if you have to be incentivized to go do it no matter what he was getting 21 million dollars you see what i'm saying to come to detroit you got to pay a tax when you when you're when you're a 19 win team or whatever the pistons were this year you got to pay a tax. When Pudge Rodriguez came to the Tigers, when Magli Ordonez came to the Tigers, guess what Illich had to pay? A tax. You have to. That's the way that the real world works, Brandon. I, I, I would like to think I would be the same way. I, I got to be incentivized to do, to do the thing. You know, the only way it works different is if you are a championship team and, you need, and somebody wants to come to be the caveat at the end of their career. Right where you have something to offer them. All that Detroit had to offer Monty was, "Here's the roster, and here's your bag, bud." 
Right. Here's your bag. And it comes down to this, too. Aaron S., and this this was out there, too. Monty Williams said didn't want to go to any team. He wanted a year off. We had to make him a huge offer not to take that year off. Guys, this is how negotiations work and supply and demand. Monty Williams was the supply. The Pistons had the demand. That's it. That's all. There's your big free agent signing. Arguably there one you of go, the biggest man. free agents out there. It, it is. It no, is like, that like, simple. And seriously, when you're building. So now at least, you know, you got some sort of foundation and something that's different. And, and I, I can't wait to see it, man. I can't, I can't wait, wait to see, to see Kate Cunningham run this offense. I can't wait to hear these guys because I oh, – let me reiterate. You know what I care about? I care about the players in the Pistons locker room and what was the conversations with Troy Weaver when it was about get money because I – I'm reading the tea leaves saying that they were like, no, this we really want him. No, we got to get him. We got to get him. So the owner, knowing that your guys that you're counting on and your Cades and your Ivies and your Derns and that locker room wants this guy. It's the same, you know, isn't it a lot to the beginning of what we're dealing with, you know, with the, with the Lions, having the right coach, having the guy, even though that guy started, you know, started from the beginning. But and it's, I, cult, it's culture, and it's about your players and getting the most out of it. And I think Monty Williams is perfect for here.